Last night, the gauntlet was thrown down. We were faced with a decision. And the decision came from Neil Young. He oh. said, you decide. Oh. You get Young or you get Rogan. You don't get both. That's what he said. So if you haven't heard this story, Neil Young is apparently unhappy that Spotify, the Spotify in, employs Joe Rogan um, because he's spreading misinformation about the COVID vaccination. Gun to head, what's your answer? <laughs> I'm going around the room, so be ready. House right. divided. Yeah. <laughs> we are probably a house divided. Gun to head, who are you choosing? Rogan. Hey, that's easy. Easy. Don't I'm, pander. Easy. I'm not I'm, I'm not choosing pandering. young. I'm choosing young. I'm not pandering. Not choosing young, but I'm saying like if this was a real question, which it's it, not. It is. Basically what It's stop. a real question today. Stop it. It's a real Basically question. Basically what it is is that you won't on Spotify, one of the many streaming platforms, uh, you need to choose when you go to the Spotify app, right? But I'm saying, what if this was like we're in a different parallel universe and you actually have to choose between never hearing Rogan again and never hearing Neil Young again ever? Sure. You say Rogan. I say Rogan. Here's why. I say Young. Here, here's why. I don't. I mean, the explanation is in the answer. Rogan's on every single day. Sure. He's on he, brand new shows every single day. Um, are they brand new? They are. Okay. Uh, and it's, it's different guests. And like, I will pop over there if, if somebody piques my interest. Sure. And it's, it's always somebody out of nowhere. Case in point, Dr. Peter McCullough, um, who was on Drinking Bros a couple weeks after he was on Rogan, came on, you know, our show, obviously. I don't know about him unless he goes on Joe Rogan. Okay, fair point. So there, point. there is, and I want to make and, it, and, and with, uh, and I'm sorry to interrupt you, but with the way the world is heading, like with all this crazy shit, I need, we need more Joe Rogans. I need less of Neil Young. I, I don't, I don't care. I'll sacrifice the Neil Young where Joe Rogan is the only one who can have these honest, thoughtful conversations and still get away with it. Mm. We, we can't, it's hit and miss, Right. I, uh, the Peter McCullough episode, like, had to go to Patreon. He was able to do it on Spotify. We, we can't right. do that. Um, right. There is a lot of people that are like that. I know Failure to Stop had an episode uh, last Friday uh, with uh, the terrorist whisper on it. YouTube went in there and systematically cut out segments of that show. Mm -hmm. And it's just it cobbled together, like, ripped up time codes and shit like that. And it's like... That's where we're at. So if you don't have a, a, a Rogan out there who's willing to have these conversations and things like that, and it's just somebody else's opinion. Mm -hmm. If you can't handle somebody else's opinion, if your fucking baby ears can't handle somebody else's opinion, this is probably the wrong country for you in the long run. Go somewhere else. Like, it, it, for real. Like, Neil Young should get the fuck out of here a long time ago. Um, I'm all done with his fucking bullshit. I was done since the 70s with, uh, <laughs> with Skinner. Yeah. Once Skinner shut them down, and told them to go fuck off in the biggest song, like the biggest Southern anthem of all time. I'm good. I, like, they're in, now, there is Neil Young songs that I love. There's not many, but I, I respect Neil Young as an artist and what he's done, and he's got a ton of hits, okay? But I don't need him. I don't need him anymore in my life. And I, the Spotify, what, that's going to fucking kill their demo. Oh, no. Neil Young's taking his music off of no, Spotify. Yeah. That's our demographic. No, we got to get, we gotta a, get the... Listen, in a real way, the answer is Rogan, right? Mm -hmm. Because of that reason. Just because it's like, yeah, Neil, just get off of Spotify if you're not liking it. If people want to hear your music, they're going to... I mean, most people that are probably listening to him have records, CDs, or... Eight tracks. <laughs> I mean, or it, it's like, where, um, so, iTunes I mean, is fine. Look, we all go through, we've all been through a phase in our life where we go through like a 60s phase, right? And it's usually around seventh or eighth grade. When was yours? Um, a 60s phase? 60s music. Mine was seventh and eighth grade, right? Where it was just like, ah, oh, shit. That was when, man, people were free. Man, everybody's going for it. People were free. Let's listen to Hendrix, Joplin. Stones, Beatle, like you go through all the hits, right? And even on through college, when you start to appreciate music a little more, like the, I, the Beatles have slowly become more and more reputable to me in my life where I'm like, oh shit, as you get older, because you can appreciate how hard it was to do original music like that. 
um, in such a short amount of time. Neil Young was never in that list where I was just like, man, I got Hendrix, I got Stones, I need fucking Crosby, Stills, Nash. I, you know, I don't like. We did in our family because we were like a Bob Dylan, Bob sure. Marley, Crosby, Oof. Stills. Yeah. To this day, coming from the garage, smells of weed yeah. and Neil Young. <laughs> so. Well, he lives where you live. Yes. Yes. He's from. And he, he has there. clearly all the ideals of my uh, hometown, which is <laughs> Joe Rogan needs to go, right? So um, he's right on brand. He's right on where he is right now in his life. Um, I want to be clear. I'm not like agreeing with Neil Young even posing this question. I just thought it would be funny if you actually thought about it. Um, here's the issue that I take with it and why I wanted to bring it up today. If a bunch of artists got together and decided to pull their music, like not Neil Young, that's not going to move the needle. Taylor Swift did it. You'd have some shit on your hands. You'd have some, you'd have some human shit. Artists, you'd have some dog shit on your hands. You might even have some cow shit. You'll have some fair. You'd have some shit, shit on your hands. Um, if, if you looked at uh, who was the top streaming artist last year, Georgia, was it Bad Bunny? I believe it was. Overall top streaming artist yeah. in the world. Pro- yeah, it probably was Bad Bunny. Either Bad Bunny or Drake. Ed Sheeran. Right. So if you, if you put Eminem seems to keep popping up for breaking all these Spotify records too. If you put guys like that, if they all got together and said, Hey, all of us artists are signing a petition to get him off of Spotify. I think Spotify would listen. The one thing that, that nobody really understands about Spotify. And I've said this a few times on the show. I promise you, this is real. They have said numerous times. We, we want to become the Netflix of podcasts. They don't want to do music anymore. And bullshit like this is going to force their hand a lot quicker to be like, all right, great. Get the fuck out of here, Neil Young. Uh, Here's the top 10 of 2021. Okay. I'm sorry. Hold on. This Uh, isn't Drake one? No. So this is updated through December 2021. Justin Bieber, Ed Sheeran, The Weeknd, Adele, Ariana Grande, Dua Lipa, Taylor Swift, Coldplay. Huh. Coldplay? Coldplay's still rocking, huh? Oh, God. Good for them. Yeah. Oh, well, Um, they did that song with BTS. they did. I might have done it. Yeah. Um, either way, let's say they got together. Like, I could see Coldplay doing some bullshit like this now that, now that they're super woke. Um, yeah. yeah. For real. But, like, if you, really, if you really break down someone's talking about it, like, if you really break down the ask of Neil Young, it's like they're asking them to break their $100 million contract with Joe Rogan. Yeah. Get him off there. Yeah. Pay him anyways. Yeah. Just to keep... Neil Young and how much I think it someone broke it down of like how much the artists actually make from these streaming services where it's we did it on on Drinker Bros. Okay, so I want to say that Spotify might be the least. They are. They're the least. Yeah. So with with that, get get the fuck out of here, Neil. Sell your catalog. Why why you you can. Everybody else is selling their catalog. Yeah. What are you saying? Now, if other artists get together like this and say, hey, we want Joe Rogan off of this platform. That's when you're going to be in a, in a sticky situation. For real. Like, like Taylor's, like Joe Rogan has 11 million downloads per episode per day. Okay. And it's Spotify exclusive, Spotify only. But if you took a Taylor Swift off of there, that's more than 11 million a day. Maybe Neil Young's situation is that. Uh, no. Uh, I mean, he has Rogan, according to these numbers, 200 million people monthly listen to that. The highest artist was like 88. Yeah. Who was it, by the way? The Weeknd. The Weeknd. Shit. The weekend had like eight. They, so Spotify classifies it by monthly listens. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. And Rogan gets about 200 million people a month, and the highest Whew. musical artist is at 88. He's 88. Million. And wow. Yeah. Um, That's so, an no, Neil, set. it's not happening. Also, <laughs> I, think Neil's, I think Neil's demographic and Rogan's demographic might kind of cross a little bit, whereas I don't think Taylor Swift fans are affected in any way by Rogan's misinformation, right? You know what I'm saying? It depends on where... I think Neil Young is kind of seeing the It depends on on where it comes from and why. Like, Taylor Swift's audience is massive. They're aggressive. They will burn down your fucking house. 